Well, well, what do we have here? Oh man. Check that out. Wow, it's it's really heavy, guys. It's a really nice box, I have to say. And in case you're wondering, this cost about $300, uh, not bad. Here we go. Oh, wow. This looks amazing. All right, take a look. Beautifully packaged. I have to say, the first thing I notice is that the color is a lot darker. It's a very vibrant caterpillar uh, yellow. Right here, though, it does not look that same color. It's much more of like a brownish yellow, which is not a bad thing. I actually kind of like it. It gives it a more hobby grade look. Uh, really cool. So let's start taking stuff out here. We've got the radio. This looks like a really good quality radio. It's light, but it doesn't have batteries in it yet. It doesn't feel cheap, if you know what I mean. Uh, sometimes you get RC radios that kind of feel too light and they're cheap feeling, but this actually feels pretty good. And it's also like coated in this nice rubberized material. So it has a good feel to it as well. We've got the battery in the charger, 2000 milliamp hours. Wow, that is a beast. You can hear it when it hits the ground, how, how much weight it has to it. That has got some serious girth to it. I cannot believe how heavy that is. And I, I know I'm making a big deal out of it, but to me it is really a big deal how heavy it is because it just shows, you know, it's really metal. It's not gonna tip over when it's got weight on the front. That's amazing. So I think, I think that most of the body back here is plastic, but all of this is definitely metal. Bucket, the bucket is metal. Pretty sure you guys can hear that. It does have lights and it does have sound. It has proper articulating steering in the center. It is four wheel drive. I have seen some comments that people say that it's not completely four wheel drive. It's got kind of open differentials. So if the front end is stuck, the rear end might not do too much for it. So we'll have to kind of experiment with that. But so far, I am really impressed with the way that this thing looks. Let's bring the camera in a little bit closer for you guys to see. Check out those rams. Now how this works, it's not hydraulic, it's all electric, which means that there are servos back here. You can kind of see the head of a servo right there. And it's basically like a uh, corkscrew. So as the servo spins, it actually retracts or extends this uh, front ram. So that way the bucket can be raised or lowered. Same thing with the other two rams right here underneath. We've also got a lot of nice detail here. The cab is pretty nice. Uh, plastic, plastic windscreen right there. The tires are rubber. They're not super soft, but they are soft enough. I think they'll have pretty good traction. Plus, you also look at the surface of this course. It's really smooth. This loader should have no problem navigating through that. Oh man, I'm not kidding. This thing is extremely heavy for the size of it. I believe that there are lights down here as well. The other side is exactly the same. Uh, these lights are supposed to light up, which is pretty cool. Taking a look at the underside, don't think there's too much to see. We don't actually have drive shafts. I believe that, that this operates on kind of like a, a MOA system, which is motor on axle. It should make it a pretty simple operating system as far as drivetrain goes. So I just ran inside to grab my T-Rex 4 and some batteries for the radio so we can actually power this thing on and see if it has any battery charge on the LiPo that's included. Right off the bat, you can see the T-Rex 4 and the loader are almost identical in size. I would actually say they are identical. Uh, the T-Rex 4 is actually a little bit taller. Uh, now in weight, this is already heavy, but believe it or not, the loader is heavier than a T-Rex 4. Now I'm using a T-Rex 4 as a reference because a lot of people have T-Rex 4s and soon enough we'll have a comparison with the loader and one of the Traxxas Stampede uh, Monster Jam trucks that I have because this truck is going to be working the track during future monster truck shows, flipping the trucks over when they turn over, stuff like that. So this is also pretty interesting right here. You have a little latch that actually helps to keep the battery tray on along with the screw. So I think you could probably just have the latch but for now, I do have both the screw and the latch locking the battery compartment. Flip it back over. All right, as with any RC model, radio on first, and there's a power switch underneath. 
uh, is on. Okay, so with this button, I'm probably going to use it without the sound kit, uh, just because it's kind of loud, and I don't think you guys are going to hear me very well. But that's to that's to operate the sound kit. Check that out. It's so smooth. And then, so so basically, what I'm doing, I'm just going back to tilt it up and forwards to bring it down, and then side to side should be the bucket itself. Wow. And you can do both at the same time, and they are completely proportional. So I can do it very slowly, or I can speed it up, which is really, really nice. All right, now let's try steering. Wow. Okay, now the other thing I'm noticing is that the lights are turning on whenever there is a function in use. So if you look at the bucket in motion, you can see that the lights are turning on. All right, drive. And the throttle is also proportional, so I can either slow it down or I can go really fast. I mean, it's not really fast, but I can either go full power or I can just give it a little bit of juice. This is amazing, guys. So I'm guessing the only thing with the light button but the lights are still turning on, so I don't know if the light button's really doing anything. Uh, let's also, let's go ahead and turn it around. Are there lights in the rear? It's a little bit too bright to, to quite see if there's lights on in the rear. But hey, it doesn't matter. This thing is so cool. I'm sure you guys want to hear the sound kit, so here we go. Wow, all I can say is that I'm super impressed, but here's the real testament. Can it scoop dirt? Yes, <laughs> this is so cool, guys. The other thing that I want to point out to you guys, which is very cool that I read about online, is that this machine has bump stops. And basically what that means is it has safety mechanisms. I don't know if, yeah, okay, you can see them in here. Right there, camera will focus. Right there, that little, that little kind of button right there is a bump stop and basically what that does is it is it cuts off the electrical power when the steering has fully uh, extended so that way you don't overextend the steering you don't strip any gears none of that so there is a built-in a built-in safety feature for those things and it's actually incorporated all around the machine for the bucket I know you guys probably want to see it running a little bit more and I'm gonna give you that right now
What a great way to end it right here. A full bucket, absolutely no problem digging right into this pile of dirt. I am impressed with this. I would absolutely recommend this machine to anybody who has the interest in a construction vehicle. Huina does also make some other vehicles such as excavators and dump trucks. Perhaps we will get those in the future, but for right now, I am going to get a ton of use out of this loader. We're gonna do a full video very soon of completely replenishing this track with dirt using this loader as much as we can. Right there, you can see on the racing ramp that we were able to dump a bucket full and it's gonna work just as I had hoped. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I am so excited to get more use out of this loader. It's been fantastic using it for just the 30 minutes that I have on camera. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I will see you very soon in the next one.